San Diegans accomplish great things every day. We care about our neighbors and our community. We are proud of our diversity. We are resilient. We hold our leaders accountable. We live in one of the most dynamic cities in America. The San Diego Union Tribune, telling San Diego's story for more than 150 years. everyone, welcome to the San Diego Union Tribune Festival of Books. Give yourselves a round of applause for being here. Everybody. All right, that was silly. Hey, I'm Sam Zion, uh, mostly known as Sam the Cooking Guy, and I'm here with my book, Sam the Cooking Guy, Recipes with Intentional Leftovers. I love this book. It's my fourth book, it's my favorite book. And I'm not saying that because you're sitting there. I'm saying that because it's my favorite book. So look, here's the deal. I changed the way that uh, I cooked a few years ago. I'm not proud of it, but I used to be somebody that would not hang on to leftovers, not hang on to extra the pieces of vegetables that I was cutting but not using. I'm not proud of that, but, but that was me. And I don't remember what recipe it was, what changed it, but I'm telling you at some point I went, I should hang on to that. I'm sure I can do something with it. And then the, the thinking transformed into, well, if I'm making a piece of chicken to have just as chicken tonight, I bet there's some way that I can repurpose that chicken for tomorrow in potentially a way more interesting way. I mean, look, people cook all the time and they make like a whole bunch of chicken and they're eating chicken Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. And I don't know about you, but that just gets so boring. I just want to poke my eyes out. Hence, recipes with intentional leftovers. We're making things, but then we're finding other ways to use them. Make my favorite salmon, it's crispy salmon, my wife's favorite, we make it all the time. But don't eat it exactly like that, then turn it into a really delicious soup, or turn it into salmon avocado toast. Do cool stuff with it. Perfectly roasted chicken, turn it into other things besides eating it like chicken. So today I'm gonna show you one of my favorite recipes in the book, the reverse sear, how to cook a steak so perfectly that when it's done, there's no gray ring. It's gorgeous, medium rare, end to end, top to bottom, side to side. And of course, eat it like a steak. It's a steak, it wants to be eaten like that. But then you can turn it into things. And we're gonna turn it into this beautiful Thai beef stir fry. And I know you might be thinking, but Sam, we've already cooked the steak once. Won't we be cooking it a second time? And I say, hey, who's leading this class? Don't you worry about that, Sparky. I got the con right here. The con, is that the expression? I don't know. I, I got the con, I think that's submarine talk. I don't, conning tower, that's what it is. The, 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 the main guy in a submarine, I guess the captain or who's ever in charge at that moment. It's that periscope thing that goes up and down. I believe that's called the conning tower, hence the expression, I've got the con. So. We gotta get going, we gotta get our steak into the oven. Let me show you how I prep it. Then we're gonna make this little sauce for it. It's gonna be so great. You're gonna to wanna to reach through the screen and grab this stir fry when we're done. If you can pull that off, then you should be teaching us something here instead of me. All right, check this out. Should be obvious, this is the steak. And we're using a ribeye because I'm a fan of ribeyes. I think they're delicious. I really think they're the way to go. And this is what we've got. So let me show you how to season it. It's very simple little avocado oil. You do not need to waste your expensive extra virgin olive oil on this. That would be a waste. And all we're gonna give it is kosher salt and black pepper. Kosher salt because it's, uh, it's the way to go. Chunkier grains, it's what every restaurant cook uses. There's no additives, no anti-clumping agents. It's the way we like to cook. In fact, because it has big chunky grains, there's less sodium in a tablespoon of kosher salt than there is in iodized table salt. And I'm using avocado oil because it smokes at 500 degrees, which is pretty much about as high as it gets in an oil neutral clean flavor and it's good fat. Now for cooking it. In the oven, I like to use a rack. 
But because I realize not everybody has one, the book has proposed a little hack, and that is two slices of onion. It's perfect for it. It keeps it off the deck. For me, that's really the main point of this. And that's it. You lay your steak on top of that, and it's ready to go. My oven is at 275 degrees, and I know that sounds low, but trust me, that temperature is gonna cook the steak beautifully, evenly, and perfectly. And we're gonna know it's a perfect medium rare when it's between 130 and say 133 degrees. And we're gonna know that because we're gonna use an instant read thermometer, digital version like this, probably 20 bucks on Amazon, greatest thing ever or one of these guys, right? This goes into the steak, this sits outside of the oven, and then it will tell you when it's ready. It will beep, they make these things these days that will tell your phone when they're ready. But what are you doing? You're gonna go grocery shopping? Well, you got, forget it. Pay attention to your food, ladies and gentlemen. That's important. I'm putting this in the oven, I'm gonna come back, we're gonna make our stir fry sauce, cut some vegetables, and get closer to eating this, and it, oh my, is gonna be great. All right, we're gonna start by making the sauce that is gonna go into the stir fry. And we begin with two tablespoons of soy sauce. One, two, rough approximation. It's like uh, hand grenades, close enough is good enough. One tablespoon of fish sauce. And if you're scared of fish sauce thinking, it's gonna be all fishy and gross, it's not unless you're three years old, and I don't think any of you are three years old. It's just gonna give that really gorgeous boost of flavor in the form of something called umami that makes everything better. So go with it. I would hate to think that you would buy the book. That came out wrong. I want you to buy the book. I'm encouraging you to buy the book. I would hate to think you would own the book, get to this recipe and then go, oh, fish sauce, it's gonna be gross, and leave it out. Don't leave it out. You'll never know it's there. You'll just take a bite and go, oh, this is delightful. He's a genius. I don't know how he pulled this together, but it's fantastic. That's what I want from you. I really do. Leave the fish sauce in. You ever had anchovies in a Caesar salad? You don't taste anchovies, right? You taste delicious Caesar salad. Fish sauce is made from anchovies. It's all coming together now, isn't it? We're here for a reason, ladies and gentlemen. We're here to improve our food lives. You don't get anywhere unless you try new things. To push yourself a little bit, just a little bit. And having you add fish sauce which is now readily available in almost every Western supermarket you walk into. If they've got it, you can have it, use it, and be happy with it. Back to the sauce. Next in is the juice of a lime. Lovely, lovely. A teaspoon of sugar that looks like this. And we mix. Just till the sugar is dissolved. Of course you can do this ahead of time. You can do anything ahead of time. Cook the steak the day before. Have it the next day as this. Stir fry and you'll be very happy. Okay, let's cut some vegetables. All right, here's what we've got. We've got uh, yellow onion, we've got red pepper, we've got ginger, and we've got garlic. We need all of these. So start with the red pepper. I need uh, like a half of one of these. So I'll just take the sides off like this. Now I don't want this little, uh, I can't remember what that's called. Membrane? Membrane. Thank you, Chance. We'll take that out. I mean, it won't kill you if you leave it in. Uh, and now we'll cut this thin, depending on how you like it. I like to encourage people to think about how something is gonna be served. Now these will shrink down a little bit, but I think an easier bite would be to have them, just like that. So we'll do that to both sides. Uh, and uh, some of you may be saying, oh, look how lovely his knife cuts. Two things, one, it's a Sam the Cooking Guy knife, but more importantly, I do this little thing called sharpening them on a regular basis that you really should be doing because if you're not, you're dealing with a dull knife and that's no good for anybody. All right, half of an onion, yellow. If it was red, it wouldn't be the worst thing in the world. We'll just make some small cuts like this. Perfect, this, this, ginger. Nothing, ladies and gentlemen, replaces fresh ginger. I know you've probably got dried ginger in your pantry at home, and that's fantastic if it's Christmas and you're making some cake or, or, or Halloween and you're doing some pumpkin thing, but we're not doing that today. We want, I don't know, about this much. So you get the woody, stocky outside part off, and yes, you can do that with a spoon, but I don't like doing it with a spoon. I like doing it 
with a knife. And now we'll cut thin slices here. And then if you want, stack them up or just start cutting. Beautiful. So this is a great spot to work on your knife skills. Gather it all up, fingers on here, and just back and forth. Scoop it together and repeat. Take your time. The only time I cut myself is really when I'm rushing. So you want this fairly fine, but a nice little hit of ginger in the middle of eating is just a glorious thing. I like the way that looks. And now garlic. Use a garlic press, which is easy. This I've had for probably 20 years. They don't make it anymore. What I like about it is you can put the garlic in whole without peeling it, and then this happens. It just comes out all gorgeous. So we'll take this little guy out, put another one in, and press. Nothing, nothing like fresh garlic. Could we get both these guys in at the same time? Of course we can. One last thing, basil. It is a Thai recipe, so we're just going to pick off a bunch of these leaves. Look, they're going to definitely wilt, but if you're worried and you want, just pull them apart. It's not an issue. Here's the thing about cooking. You get to do things the way you want. It's your recipe. You're in charge. Somebody gives you a recipe. You don't like part of it. Change it. Make it your own. You don't like big basil leaves. They don't have big basil leaves. But ah, the freshness of these leaves in this dish is really outstanding. So the recipe calls for about a cup of them. And that is a loose cup that is not packed. So I'm getting pretty close now. I'll just throw a couple more in. And look at what we've got. We've got our basil, we've got our garlic, we've got our ginger, we've got our yellow onion, we've got our red peppers. I say we're pretty much there. I gave it a great haircut. Okay, I'm set, this is set, the sauce is set. Let me check the steak. When it's ready, oh, we're ready. And it's ready. Is one of the things that I like about using the onions instead of the rack, is that now you've got these gorgeous onions all soft and amazing that you can cut up and put in anything you're using the steak with. We'll put it here, looks nice. Now, here's the deal. If I was going to um, present this steak on a plate, like for a regular dinner, I might uh, put it in a cast iron pan for 45 seconds to a minute aside, super hot pan, to give it a little bit more color. But for our purposes today, this is gonna be just fine. But the real test is this, we'll cut, and that's what the goal was. The goal was even, even, even. And that's beautiful. I love it. I love it. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to cut some thin pieces of this because that's what's going to go into our stir fry. Just get them nice and thin. Perfect. It's moist. It's tender. It's going to have amazing flavor. I mean, come on. So we'll cut this guy up. All right, perfect. Maybe one bite while I'm here. So a bite of the steak, but a little bit of the soft onion too. Mmm. Mmm. I'm so happy. But not as happy as I'm gonna be when this is complete as this stir fry. My flat top is on, I say it's time to cook. All right, so I know the book says wok or pan, but I like this big flat griddle. For some oil and then all of our vegetables, right in the middle. And we do this. Break them up. Let everybody get the benefit of the garlic, the ginger. I've got gardeners showing up next door, and that's okay. They're coming because they know how this smells. So this gets, uh, you know, a couple minutes. Just to do its thing, start to soften a bit. You don't want to go too far. We want to keep the vegetables crisp, tender. So really no more than a couple minutes. And this part is just warming through the beef. Obviously, it's already cooked and gorgeous. So a minute or so here, and then the star of our show, the sauce. And we mix it in. I'm telling you, ladies and gentlemen, if you were standing in front of me right now, you'd be very happy. And last but not least, our gorgeous basil. It'll wilt, it'll soften and it will add that one bite that you can't get from anything else. And when it's there, let's take it off, put it in a bowl. Look at that. But let's bring it over, put it on some rice, and get into it. And here's how we do this. A bowl of steamed rice, 
one of my faves. And then we take some of this gorgeousness and it goes right on top. The vegetables, the basil, the everything. Just two more things. Little dusting of sesame seeds and a little fresh cilantro. Ah, uh, look. Ah, uh, look. And from leftover steak. I mean, come on now. And we bite. Mm. The lime, the basil, the fish sauce that I would never even know was there makes this incredible. Mm. I want you to make it. I want you to make everything in the book. Sam the Cooking Guy, recipes with intentional leftovers. And you can get this book from our indie bookseller partners from the bookshop link on the screen. I'm Sam Zion, Sam the Cooking Guy. That's me, that's my book. I hope you've had fun. Don't eat the same thing all the time, right? Right. Right. See you guys.